okay so let us come to a new topic called vapor pressure okay let us try to understand it like this let us take a petri dish and in this petri dish let us put some water Now, let us cover this by a bell jar, okay, and see here. Let there be a manometer. Okay. Let us try to uh, let us seal this with, with with some wax or something. The surface where it touches the circular thing where it touches the touches the floor or, or the table, seal it with wax. After some time, you'll find this needle swinging. What does it show? It shows that the pressure inside is going up. Now why should that happen? Why should that happen? Because this had a fixed amount of gas sealed inside it, right? We have sealed the, we have sealed the container. So, so somehow what is happening? The volume is the same, correct? The volume is the same N R T. So, so, so P is equal to N R T upon V, V, so V is a constant, okay, it's a constant, T is a constant, R is a constant, so what should lead to an increase in pressure? N. N. <clears throat> now, how does N increase if I've sealed it? How does it increase? So, it must be due to a process called evaporation of water. So, what happens? Evaporation of water. What is the evaporation first? What is evaporation? What is evaporation of water? Evaporation is actually a surface phenomena. It is conversion of liquid into the gaseous state at a temperature which is less than the boiling point. Right? It is, it is conversion of, of a liquid into a gas into a gas at a temperature. below the boiling point correct now somehow we think <coughs> water should not not become a vapor below the boiling point but it is not true and it is not true due to so many reasons we have seen the wet clothes getting dry they, they, they're not at the boiling temperature right boiling they're not at 100 degrees centigrade okay nowhere on the earth earth in the atmosphere on the surface of the earth will you reach a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade nowhere not even deserts okay not even desert 60 65 degree is is, is the maximum it will go okay so so what happens is is we still find that clothes are getting drier and and maybe the flower pot in which you have put water that starts getting dry so you have to water it frequently the money plant thing where you you put in water you see it going down in your in your uh, in your water filters you if it's a storage kind of filter and transparent you'll find the water 
level going down okay so 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 many places we see the evaporation happening and and, and it is a it is a surface phenomena it is a surface phenomena and indeed why is it a surface phenomena because because the same thing you increase the surface area you you take it in a in a wider this thing uh, you you'll find the evaporation much quicker if the, if the surface is more okay or, or or suppose water gets spilt on a glass table why i'm saying glass table is because it's quite visible the area is visible and after some time maybe after an hour or so if you come back it will leave a trace but but the water is not there water is water is not there so what has happened it has converted into vapor at a temperature that is much below the boiling point which which is supposed to be 100 degree centigrade so it is a surface phenomena right it's a surface phenomena it is a surface phenomena and so what happens the 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 molecules here say they receive energy from the energy from the ambient temperature they take up the energy from the ambience and they they already have high energy how i'll i'll let you know in the next section so they already have higher energy than the body than, than the particles below the bulk and so so they take up that energy and suddenly evaporate so so it goes into the atmosphere like a gaseous particle from the, from the ambient temperature from the from the heat energy in the ambience right why not the particles below the surface yes because they are not exposed to that right because they are not exposed to that even if they want to want to escape there are particles above the above that which is trying to stop it okay so so you, you you'll understand it better when i when i go to surface tension so after some time as as more and more particles evaporate they are nothing nothing but they are nothing but gaseous particles is it not they are gases and it is this which leads to an increase in n and hence the increase in pressure this pressure is called the vapor pressure pressure is called the vapor pressure so so the pressure exerted by by the evaporated liquid at a given temperature is called vapor pressure that's called vapor pressure it is quite independent of the amount of fluid and that is the best part about it okay it is independent of of the amount of liquid independent in that sense that that at the vapor pressure there should be some liquid it's not that you put a drop and it will produce the same vapor pressure because because the the air above it should get saturated okay there is another phenomena that you should understand at the equilibrium because what you'll find at this temperature there'll be an equilibrium so so the pressure gauge goes up reaches a point and and increases no more so so it is at equilibrium and and beyond that it won't go up what does it mean it means that that the, it reaches a saturation level and stays there that will happen even if the bell jar was maybe 10 times bigger than this that means what is happening 
more and more liquid will evaporate, but it will go to the same vapor pressure. Understand? It does not depend on the amount of liquid. It also does not depend on the on the on the on the volume up on the volume above the liquid. Okay. It is independent of the amount of liquid and and of and of the and of the it is independent of the amount of liquid and of the volume of volume of space above the liquid above the liquid we feel that if there are more there is more liquid into it then then more will evaporate now what happens let us try to understand more and more the number of particles go into this at one point what starts happening maybe this particle suddenly hits the surface of the liquid and becomes liquid and some other particle some other particle gets the energy and it bounces off at the equilibrium the number of particles that is hitting the liquid and becoming liquid from gas and the number of particles that are becoming from liquid to gas is a is equal so it is a dynamic process it is a dynamic process where it's a dynamic process where the molecules from the where the molecules from the liquid go into the gaseous state and those from the convert into the liquid. convert into the liquid right so at equilibrium therefore at equilibrium what happens liquid becomes gas and gas becomes liquid this is the equilibrium right so they are said to be at equilibrium now what happens you might be thinking if there was more liquid more will evaporate why there is still more liquid here why is it not why is that not evaporating because that more liquid is becoming liquid and that means because the more you try to become there if you if you try to shift to the to more into the gaseous state then more will start hitting you hitting the liquid and they they become back into the liquid they come back into the liquid so there is an equilibrium that is maintained it is not that you keep on pouring you put 10 liters of of uh, water and kind of the bell jar will burst no so it should depend on the volume it cannot just cannot why should it why should it that's what i am telling you then it means according to you whatever be the amount of liquid i keep here all should get evaporated no if you don't increase the volume that means everything here should evaporate whatever be the amount you put it will evaporate do you mean to say that no what i'm saying is uh, that if we increase the amount of liquid and we also increase the volume of the container hmm then all of it will no evaporate. no then also the dynamic equilibrium is there. That is, that is why we are studying it. Otherwise, it would have become a random phenomena and we would have left it. At a given temperature, the amount of vapor pressure that it produces is a constant. It is fixed. Obviously, as you raise the temperature, more of it gain energy, uh, more, more of it gains energy and, and converts into the gaseous phase. But, but at, a, at a different temperature. Try to understand what happens if you increase the volume. What will happen? You are not increasing the surface first of all. 
it's in the bulk the the particles this is a surface phenomena number one so you will feel that increasing the surface will do it it won't it won't this won't why increasing the surface won't why because because the more suddenly tries to evaporate more but more of it sinks back the more of them co comes from the gaseous phase and becomes liquid. Now, now you might think that yes, if I put a bucket of water and go out for 10 days, come back, I see the, uh, uh, the, the bucket evaporated, but it is not in a sealed chamber. It is not in a sealed chamber. We are talking about a sealed chamber. When you are putting it in an atmosphere, it, it means maybe the bell jar is broken here. So what happens it keeps on going into the atmosphere seeping into the atmosphere and that process continues so 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 you do whatever you want to do they'll evaporate so in a closed container this 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 will, the the rate of evaporation will suddenly go down actually it will stop so if you have if you have a bottle that is tightly corked it does not evaporate the wine bottles Otherwise, what happens? It is 50 years old and suddenly you find there is nothing. <laughs> it does not happen, right? That's why they are so tightly caught. Okay. It won't evaporate if it is closed. And since we have not observed something like this, we feel that it does not happen. We have not observed something like this, right? We have not seen a liquid evaporating in a closed container and have tried to measure the pressure due to that. Fine? So, so, so it is uh, the, the vapor pressure. So, I'll, I'll give this the heading as vapor pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean the definition and the characteristics of vapor pressure. Okay, so, so it's a dynamic process. It is independent of the amount. Okay. It is dependent on the temperature and increases with the rising temperature. It is dependent on the temperature. and increases with the rising temperature okay now all liquids will not exert the same amount of vapor pressure certain liquids will exert more and certain will exert less just don't talk about water only maybe if you put alcohol in this you'll find the vapor pressure to be more okay so different different liquids exert different vapor pressures at the same temperature okay they exert different vapor pressures at the same temperature the liquid which exerts the liquid which exerts more vapor pressure than the other liquid is said is 
said to be more volatile more volatile than the latter what do you mean by volatility what do you mean by volatile it evaporates easily so alcohol is more volatile than water okay or the nail polish removers are more volatile a perfume is more volatile so if you leave the same same amount of perfume in identical perfume and water in identical identical petri dishes or, or or a flat kind of thing you'll find that after some time the amount of of alcohol or the or the perfume that has evaporated is more than the amount of water that has evaporated so the vapor pressure will be more in yes so so its vapor pressure has to be more that's what i said no mm -hmm. exert the, at the same time the liquid which exerts more vapor pressure than the other liquid is said to be more volatile than the other okay mm -hmm. If you, if you look at the graphs, you can, you can clearly see that some of the liquids, they are at, they, they, at the same temperature, they will be exerting, exerting a higher, higher vapor pressure. So, they are more volatile. Correct? Fine. 